Hi guys and welcome to Royal Vibes. Conservative King Charles rules out more cuts to the number of working royals. The king has ruled out cutting the size of the working royal family for the foreseeable future, despite widespread predictions of a slim down monarchy. So guys, before we get right into the story in much detail, please do ensure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give the video a like as we get right into it. Sources close to Charles have said he has no plans to reduce the number of working royals from the current 11 more than any of the other European monarchies. His decision is one of several which shows a desire to be much more conservative than many predicted and also following his late mother's practice. It comes despite signals from within the palace that he wants a slim down coronation next year, costing taxpayers less to reflect the financial challenges facing Britain. In his first 45 days on the throne, the 33 year old monarch has won praise for his more informal touchy feely approach to the job, but he has closely followed the late queen in her ways. Charles, for example, is set to stop declaring how much tax he pays on the grounds that his mother, who began paying voluntarily in 1993, never published a summary of her payments. The king, who as Prince of Wales felt he should set an example on transparency, paid £5.8 million tax on an income of £23 million income from the hereditary duchy of Cornwall estate last year. Aids have said that although the plans still have to be finally signed off, the intention is that he will follow Queen Elizabeth's policy and Prince William, as the new Prince of Wales, will for the very first time publish details of his tax bill. The question is part of a much wider palace review on the way into how the monarchy will operate with fewer generations of working royals. Aids believe it will be difficult for the family to undertake as many as 3,500 engagements around the country and the world. The family and the advisors are considering what happens to many of the scores of organizations previously represented by a royal patron whose presence can help raise funds and bring attention to causes. These are things that are all being looked at as part of a wider review at the moment, one senior royal source said. William and Kate, the new prince and princess of Wales, may be able to take on some new patronages and increase their workload. Kate, in particular, has made it clear that while she is passionate about the issues such as giving children a better start in life, Looking after her own children is her primary focus. Before the Duke and Duchess of Sussex quit the, um, in the royal family in 2020, some palace officials had forecast that there would be no role for the king's siblings when the reign changed. But with Harry and Meghan gone as well as Prince Andrew, the king now seems grateful to have the support of Princess Anne and the Earl of Countess of Wessex. There are also the late queen's cousins. Um, Princess Alexandra, 85, the Duke of Kent, 87, the Duke of Gloucester, 78, and his wife, the Duchess of Gloucester, 76. A senior royal source said there are no current plans to change anything on that front. Longtime royal observer Joe Little, managing editor of Mag uh, Majesty magazine, suggested the late Queen's cousins could continue to spread the load a little bit, a little for a while yet. I think they are, they are needed to just carry on what they are doing. Another turning issue still unresolved is who stands in for the king and queen council when they are abroad. Under the current um, Regency Act, two councillors of state are chosen out of the monarch's spouse and the first four adults in line to the throne to authorize official appointments and state and sign state papers. Charles and Queen Camilla are expected to go on their first official overseas tour soon, and if both are away, um, it could, would be two from William, Harry, Andrew, and Beatrice standing in for them. But none of them, apart from William, undertakes official duties. Harry is in California, and asking Andrew to sign the legislation into law would raise a lot of eyebrows. He quit public duties over his association with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Mr. Layden noted that the king and his consort have proved more informal in their approach to royal duties. He is obviously much more touchy feely than his mother was, he said. And Camilla had been photographed at Ascot with her arm on her shoulder of former jockey Willie Carson, not something he could have imagined the late queen doing. But the king has followed his mother, indicating that he will spend a couple of days a week at Windsor and gather the family together at Sandringham in Norfolk at Christmas.
He has also pledged to move into Buckingham Palace when a £369 million renovation program ends with work on the monarch's apartments in 2027. But he and his queen council will, re will retain Clarence House as their London residence until then. The, queen's desire, the king's desire to follow in his mother's footsteps has meant he has spent much of the past few weeks at Balmora. Last week, despite regular trips back to London for duties at Buckingham Palace, he undertook his ninth official engagement in Scotland since the queen's funeral. He met families settled at Aberdeen from Afghanistan, Syria and Ukraine. Government ministers are understood to be keen for the royal family to help in their efforts to maintain the union and amid attempts by Scotland's SNP government to hold a fresh independence referendum. But Aids have insisted his focus on Scotland has been nothing to do with constitutional worries. He has been following the same pattern as the Queen, who would have been at Balmora. Indeed, he would normally have been up there at this time of the year, one said. Palace officials sometimes compare the monarchy to the design of a uh, Memai jar. You might you think it looks the same, but it changed numerous times down the years. After a couple of doubling years, it looks as if King Charles III is trying to pull off the same trick as his parents did, modernizing the monarchy through almost impeccable change. It makes sense for an institution that at least given a sense of stability and continuity as part of its mission statement. The new king has certainly brought a more informal style to the monarchy during whirlwind first for the five days of the throne, but he, little, he shows little sign of wanting more radical change. His accession proved far smoother than many had predicted and polls suggest the British public have warmed to him and Queen Council Camilla at a time when political and economic instability is causing concern to millions. Down the years there has been much talk of the King, then Prince of Wales wanting to slim down monarchy. But after the loss of the Queen, Prince Philip, Harry, Meghan and Andrew, the number of royals who undertake taxpayer-funded duties to support the monarch is already down by five. The current total of 11 working royals is more than in any other European country. Most European monarchies make do with three, four or five working royals effectively after slimming down in the past few years. The UK has a bigger population than any of the other monarchies, so the arguments, the argument runs in need more working royals to support the country, but we should expect to see the number reduced further before Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis are ready to play their part. It is likely that the late Queen's cousins all in the late 70s and 80s will continue to reduce the number of engagements they undertake. Having the living the, the magnificent seven of the King, Queen Consort Camilla, um, William, Kate, Anne, Edward and Sophie as the core, but palace officials see little sign of them radically increasing the number of official engagements they attend each year. So it is likely that the way the royal family operates, especially with charities, will have to change. So guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.